LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon. It's Thursday, January 6th, and welcome to SpaceX's first launch of 2022. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 4.49 p.m. Eastern Time launch from historic Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a Projection and Engineering Manager for Falcon here at SpaceX headquarters, joining you from Hawthorne, California. Thank you for tuning in for our first launch of 2022 and 35th launch of Starlink. As many of you may know, Starlink is a constellation of satellites that orbit the planet at about 550 kilometers above the Earth. Because Starlink does not rely on traditional ground infrastructure, it is ideally suited for areas of the globe where connectivity has typically been a challenge or non-existent, such as rural or remote communities. With every launch, we expand our network as well as our ability to serve communities in remote locations all around the globe. If for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow, but the latest weather forecast shows 80% favorable for liftoff today, and you can see the clear skies on your screen there. The Starlink satellites will deploy about 15 minutes after liftoff, but unfortunately we will not have ground station coverage, which means we won't have live audio or visual confirmation of payload deployment in real time. Now, given that, we'll end our webcast just after second engine cutoff and confirm deployment on social once we regain coverage. Now, the vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. So let's take a closer look at the rocket on your screen. Falcon 9 is our two-stage launch vehicle and stands about 70 meters tall. When fully fueled, it'll hold over just over a million pounds of propellant, and the vehicle will burn through most of that uh, less than three minutes after liftoff. We prep Falcon 9 for launch in our hangar at the base of the pad. Now, upon completing final checkouts, Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad with the Starlink satellites and went vertical on Wednesday around 11 p.m. Eastern time. Then from there, we proceeded to clear the pad earlier today to support liftoff. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is what we refer to as the first stage, or the booster. The booster supporting today's mission will be flying for the fourth time, and you may be able to see the SIP markings left over from this booster's previous three flights, having supported the Inspiration4, GPS3, Space Vehicle4, and 5 missions. The first stage accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. Following separation from the second stage, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for a fourth time on our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas, staged off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, if successful, it will mark the 101st recovery of a first stage booster. At the top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber interstage connected to the Falcon 9 second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine. And once the first and second stages separate at about two and a half minutes into the mission, the MVAC engine will ignite and carry the Starlink satellites to their drop-off orbit. Now, the stack of satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you can see there on your screen. That's that structure at the very top of the rocket. This protects the payload from the aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. But once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need this protection, so we will jettison the fairing halves as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Just as we reuse Falcon 9, we recover and reuse our fairing halves. The fairing halves we're using today are flight-proven, with one half flying for the fifth time and the other for a fourth time. We will be attempting to recover both fairing halves using our recovery vessel, Doug, in order to support future missions. 
Propellants have been loading on the vehicle since T minus 35 minutes. Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant vehicle, which means that it uses two propellants, a fuel and an oxidizer. Now, an oxidizer is a type of chemical that a fuel requires in order to burn. Now, most things burning on Earth use oxygen, which is readily available in the Earth's atmosphere. In Falcon 9's case, it uses super chilled liquid oxygen, or what you'll hear us call LOX. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point so that it becomes densified, which means that it has a much greater amount of mass per volume and we can load more of it into the booster. For the fuel, we use a refined form of kerosene known as RP-1 or Rocket Propellant 1. And in addition to its propellants, Falcon 9 also needs an ignition source in order to start up. And for that, we use the chemical TTEB or triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane. Currently, fuel is nearly fully loaded on stage one and is already full on stage two. Once all tanks are full, both stages will continue to be topped off with propellant until T minus two minutes to keep temperatures as cold as possible. The latest weather forecast shows 80% favorable for liftoff. The vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all still looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. And again, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup launch opportunity tomorrow at 4.28 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, thanks to the amazing work of our teams, Starlink is now live in 25 countries and regions, currently servicing over 145,000 users worldwide. In recent times, the team has been proud to support emergency responders both here in the U.S. and abroad. Now, we've had the honor of assisting first responders react to various natural disasters, such as the wildfires in the state of Washington and Hurricane Ida in Louisiana just a few months ago. We were also fortunate enough to have the ability to help our neighbors overseas during the aftermath of the floods in Germany last July. And in addition to assisting first responders, our Starlink service has helped connect communities where high-speed internet was previously unavailable. Most recently, Starlink is working with Cuba Independent Schools in Eastern Navajo Nation in New Mexico to provide internet that will help bridge the digital divide within that region. Now, to date, we have been able to connect 264 student homes and are looking forward to connecting more over the coming months. Over the last year, Starlink has also helped Texas's Ector County Independent School District and Virginia's Wise County Public School District connect to better broadband service in order to receive online health care, access to education, and more. In the Wise County School District, where lack of broadband access is particularly prevalent in the mountainous regions, SpaceX connected 45 student homes last year with Starlink Internet. And now, after their first year of service, we're happy to report that they're adding connectivity for 315 additional student homes across Wise County and Appalachia. Now, we're currently T minus four minutes and about 35 seconds from liftoff of our first Starlink launch of 2022. And Falcon 9 is progressing into the final stages of the launch countdown. Strong back retract has started. And we just heard a call out for a strong back retract. That is the trusted structure next to the vehicle, uh, which we call the transport erector, or TE. And what it's going to do is it's going to start to retract away from the vehicle. But in preparation for that, uh, we do open the clamp arms uh, that you can see kind of near the bottom of that fairing on your screen. Once those clamp arms are open, the transport erector will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly. And you can see it, it's very slight at the bottom of your screen. Those clamp arms are opening up there. We should see the TE start to retract here shortly. And there it is. It's very slow and steady, but it is moving back away from the vehicle there. The TE is the structure that provides liquids, gases, electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. And again, this TE retracting away helps to clear uh, the way for the vehicle as it lifts off.
and it looks like the TE retraction has completed. Stage one locks load complete. And we also heard the call out for locks load on first stage completion. So at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. And those white clouds that you can see on your screen around Falcon 9 uh, are created when the propellant oxidizer, the super chilled liquid oxygen, comes in contact with that warmer, humid ambient air uh, and basically densifies stage the air. Stage two throttle back. Now both first and second stage uh, are finishing up prop loading. Actually, first stage has completed uh, at T minus three minutes and second stage will complete at T minus two minutes coming up here in about 15 seconds. And at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. That means that the rocket's uh, autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And then just inside T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin M1D engines. Stage two, lock load complete. And we just heard that call out that the stage two lock load is now complete. Now the Starlink payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is looking amazing over there in Florida, as you can see on your screen. The range is green for launch and at T. T minus one minute and 23 seconds. Let's listen into the terminal countdown. Falcon 9's in startup. There's that call out. Falcon 9's autonomous internal flight computers have now taken over the launch countdown, just awaiting the final go from the launch director. LD, go for launch. And great news, we are go for an on-time liftoff. Let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 49 Starlink satellites into a 53 degree south inclination orbit. T minus 30 seconds. Minus 15. T minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. plus 45 Power. seconds into liftoff and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from launch complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying our stack of 49 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Now moments ago, we did throttle down the engines in preparation for Max-Q. And that is maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max-Q. And there's the call out that we just passed through max Q. That is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see throughout ascent. Now coming up, we will have three events happening in quick succession. That'll be main engine cutoff or what we call Miko, stage separation and second stage engine start one or SES one. Miko is where all nine of the M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And MVAC engine chill has started. And that's just a call out that the uh, engine chill on the second stage is getting ready uh, for ignition. 
Stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage, and with first stage returning back to Earth for landing, while stage two continues on its journey with the third event, SES-1, or second stage engine start one. And that's where the MVAC engine ignites up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit. We're just about 10 seconds or so away from those three events, and they will be followed by fairing deploy shortly after SES-1 as well. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. In recognition. Bearing separation confirmed. We have got some great views, all four of those events that I mentioned, MECO, stage separation, SES-1, and fairing deploy, all visually confirmed on your screen. Now the fairing halves flying on today's mission are both flight proven with one half supporting its fifth flight and the other supporting its fourth flight on today's mission. So we will be attempting to recover the halves again using our recovery vessel, Doug, to hopefully support future missions. Now on your left-hand screen is a view of the first stage. You can see the grid fins have deployed there. Uh, those help guide the vehicle back to its landing zone. And on your right-hand screen is stage two. Now, as that heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite, and this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. Then the second burn is the landing burn. This is the single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down very rapidly in order to touch down on our drone ship. Again, a shortfall of gravitas today. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And that's just a call out that we have connected with a ground station on the second stage. And as you can see on your screen, we've got some incredible views today, a daytime launch uh, with Earth looking amazing in the background of both the first and second stage views. Now we're just under two minutes away from the entry burn starting up on the first stage. So for those of you who follow, We've got a nominal trajectory call out on second stage, which is great news. Now you'll notice that uh, the, there is soot on some of these rockets that we reuse. Um, and here's a quick explanation of why and how that soot forms. The rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, used to fuel a Falcon 9 is carbon-based. So when it burns uh, the fuel, it generates soot. Now, as the booster approaches landing, as you can see on your, your left-hand screen, it does a re-entry burn to slow the, the vehicle down prior to re-entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, otherwise, aerodynamic forces would rip it apart. So because the entry burn occurs with the engines first, the booster flies through its own plume. And that is what deposits the soot onto the rocket. And again, we're just about a minute away from that entry burn, so you will see uh, that live on your screen. Again, we've got some great views of our Starlink mission today. On your left-hand screen, that is the first stage booster making its way back to Earth. And on your right-hand screen is the second stage taking the satellites to their drop-off orbit. Stage one FTS is safe. Stage one entry burn startup. 
And there you can visually see on your left hand screen, the entry burn has begun on that first stage. This will last about 20 seconds or so long. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage two FTS is saved. And that concludes the entry burn on the first stage. And really cool, you can kind of see the grid fins uh, as they rotate to help guide the vehicle back to its landing zone, which again today is a shortfall of Gravitas waiting for this booster in the Atlantic Ocean. We're just under a minute away from the landing burn beginning on the first stage. Again, have some incredible views. This is, is transonic. This is a view of the aft end of the second stage looking at the MVAC engine. So we are going to have landing burn coming up on first stage. That will last about 20 seconds long. And right when landing burn ends, we should have a Seco one or second engine cutoff one on second stage. Stage one landing burn startup. There's that call out that the landing burn has begun on first stage. And it looks like we have a live view Stage of the one, drone ship. Like deploy. Stage one landing is and we have touchdown of Falcon Stage Nine. Two. And through the cheering, we also heard that call out for Seco One, which is great news. Our booster landing today marks our 101st overall successful recovery of a first stage and, and 134th successful flight of a Falcon 9 first stage. We also heard a nominal orbital insertion for stage two. So with that call out, Expected next up. Loss of signal, Cape. Next up will be payload deploy of our 49 Starlink satellites. Now today's launch marks the Expected first loss of signal Bermuda. Today's launch marks the first East Coast launch to a 53 degree south inclination. We're flying in the south degree trajectory to increase recovery weather availability for both the booster and fairing halves during the winter months. Now we are waiting for the deployment of our 49 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about six minutes from now. But as I mentioned, we won't have live audio or visual confirmation of payload deployment due to the lack of ground station coverage. We will acquire signal with our ground station in Kodiak, Alaska at T plus one hour and 20 minutes. So for those of you interested, we will keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful payload deployment on our social channels. Now with that, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close for today. Thank you for joining us for the first launch of 2022 and our 35th launch of Starlink to date. A big thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to starlink.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.